first of all, we're very happy to have you here. I'm really happy to be here. We're honored. Here. We're honored to be to have you one on one. All as well. <laughs> very nice. Uh, so, uh, first question. Uh, personally, I admire your work and your dedication to the company. Thank you. Your connection with the fans, the whole thing you're doing on Facebook, mm -hmm. that connection is immensely good. And uh, I'm amazed that you even reply to the most um, uh, negative comments, uh, the most negative ones. Mm -hmm. um, that shows how much passion that you are uh, with your work and ideas. Uh, I think that is what uh, differentiates Razer from other companies, um, especially to those who follow it not only uh, for its products, but as a brand in general. Uh, based on what I understand, and what is widely known uh, to the public, how it feels to work for Razer, how do you, and how do you see Razer moving forward in the future? Will it stay as a company, which is, uh, as, will it stay as a company which is a vast supporter of uh, gaming platforms, or will, or it will have a more active role in the gaming industry? Sure. Well, how it feels to work at Razer, I suppose it's, uh, it's not really work. You know, at Razer, it's fun for us. You know, we. I mean, do we do we work hard? Yeah, I think we do. You know, we we're really focused in trying to design the very best products and um, delivering the best experiences, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, we really enjoy what we do. It's it's fun, and the thing is, we have always been the same. You know, right from the start, Razer was about um, for gamers by gamers. And till today, we're still the same. It's everything about designing the best possible things for gamers. And right now, I think um, it's cool. You know, I, I get to design the products I want for myself. We get some great. Um, uh, you give your passion to it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. So that's that's the thing. And you know, you you asked about um, uh, answering things on email, uh, on on Facebook, etc. That's fun for me. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. uh, that's not work. I don't want to have like a team of people managing stuff like that. I like to talk to the community. Um, and you know, interact with the community at any point of time. So that's getting the feedback for yourself. And yeah, it's yeah. it's just Instant part of feedback. being a game uh, about being a gamer. Uh, we are probably one of the world's leading brands when it comes down to um, for gamers, and we intend to continue doing that to give back to the community, to always do great products, and that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, on to next question. Um, lately, I've seen uh, you're actively. That's something that. May our, our Greek viewers may concern, <laughs> may concern. <laughs> uh, lately, I see you're actively involved and uh, passionate about the ever-growing Razor stores. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, I saw you personally being uh, recently in a Razor opening. I think I don't remember the. Uh, that was the um, Taiwan store. The Taiwan yeah, store. Right. It was so we had so many fans turn up from the US. Close. Yeah, they closed down yeah, the mall to make sure. And I remember yeah. the the video you posted when sure. you were putting your own touches. You right. were telling the people what to do, what to put it. Sure. And that that is uh, great. Um, so um, is it an area of the company that you, you are putting your own touches on the on the products? Is it an area that your company will emphasize in the future with the Razer stores? I think for us. So I, I get involved in every single aspect of any design of a mm -hmm. product. You know, it could be, it could be the product, it could be the uh, technology, it could be the packaging, it could be the store. Um, so every single bit, I, I make sure that I go through and, and experience it. Um, but it's a team effort. You know, at the end of the day, the Razer team is incredibly passionate about all the work that they do. Do we fight? Of course we fight. Do we get unhappy? Of course we get unhappy. But at the end of the day. We're all united with uh, a single four gamers by gamers um, philosophy. Mm -hmm. So moving forward from here, absolutely, you know, we will be looking to do um, more Razer stores. We're looking to roll out that experience. But I think what is different is that we—it's not really a store. Um, the people or the or the team who are who are going to be staffing all these Razer stores—they are all focused on giving the great experience. It's not about selling products. We encourage gamers to stay there, mm -hmm. play games all day long, mm -hmm. um, just have fun, you know, meet other Razer fans. That's what we want a um, Razer store to be. Connect, your, com so. connect your community even better. Absolutely. You know, yeah. we want streamers to come over, you know, chat. We want to have um, meet friends and stuff like that over there. We want a place where ourselves as gamers want to hang out mm -hmm. at. And that's what the Razer store is going to be. That, that thing happened in Thessaloniki. Uh, mm -hmm. In our international fair, you, uh, they had a Razer store sure. built up there, and uh, 
streamers were there from Greece. Mm -hmm. We were getting, we were meeting with uh, each other. Sure. Our fans attended. Right. Uh, we get photos. We have the nice big, big, big. And that's event the thing. There. So if you look at a lot of the major events, E3, um, uh, PAX, etc., it's the Razer fans that get together and they visit the mm -hmm. whole uh, event together, and that's very cool. I mean, united because I think the we enjoy what we do and you know we just want to hang out and uh, mm -hmm. have fun the cult is uniting the cult is uniting yeah. so um do, uh, do your intentions include uh, opening razor stores in smaller uh, markets um i think wherever there are razor fans we mm -hmm. want to give them the great experience um, mm -hmm. it takes time because today we're still tweaking things you know i go down personally i look at how it's built out um, i look at the places it's definitely one of those things that we're very very careful a razor store to us is like a product. We also take a long time to design it, but definitely we'll be looking at different places to set up uh, new razor stores. Mm -hmm. So we w we would like to know if you will open one in Greece. Yeah, of course. I mean, because that's one of those the things. Fans, that the fans there, it's going, they're going to make it like a temple. Mm -hmm. They will. Uh, I know from my personal experience, they will add candles. Sure. They will <laughs> add candles. I know it. <laughs> so but I I I I love Greece. You know, I've. Um, Heard so much about it. I've but always been. been. So I've not. So that's the thing. I love you know the fact that every one of my Greek friends he keep telling me come over. You know you're gonna love it. It's a you know beautiful place and stuff yeah, like that. And it is. The, the the fans that we've seen from Greece. I think that's one of those things that we want to be able to reward um, the fans there and have a place for them all of them together. Mm -hmm. um, so we're thinking about <coughs> it. I can't promise anything at this yeah, point of time. I know. We are thinking about it. We'll see. Very nice. Perfect. Uh, we will see. A brand new line of products mm -hmm. uh, in PC peripherals, new names, uh, sure, and so not just updating the current ones. Sure, but you see, the Mamba by itself um, is an incredible generation change. It's what we call the world's most advanced gaming mouse because it is by far. It's a huge generation leap. Um, there was a lot of discussion whether we should even call it the new Razer Mamba because I think it's a huge generation leap. It, de it deserves its own name. But because we had so much veneration, you know, that the name Mamba has been the ultimate wireless mouse, we said, okay, this deserves to be called the new Mamba. Although we could have just called it a whole new name, but we decided to call it the new Mamba, primarily because of how much respect the Mamba uh, mm -hmm. name has already got. It's actually a whole brand new product. It's not an update. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is like um, the strategy of your... Um of, your, uh, of, the, of Razer naming the product, it resembles Apple. Uh, do you think that um, you share some uh, strategies in the marketing uh, in the marketing section, maybe with sure. Apple? So I think the thing about Apple is um, well, we came up with the names of calling it snake names way before. In fact, I don't think Apple does that. You know, for us, we called our mice after snakes, because back then everybody was calling it like M100 or whatever it is. We thought, that's kind of boring. For ourselves as gamers, we wanted something different. And we didn't just start this trend. Everybody else started copying us after that, right? But, um, so many people have called us uh, like, uh, we, our design, you know, we, we're very focused in terms of design. We're very focused in terms of technology. Um, but yeah, we're very different. You know, we, we are focused a lot on performance. We are focused on gamers, which is what, I don't think Apple really focuses on gamers at all. Um, I can see some similarities because, you know, both of us um, really focus on uh, getting a great experience. But outside of that, you know, it's like we do our own thing. Like, we, to talk a bit like the stores, everyone's copying like the Apple store kind of concept. Yeah. We go a totally different direction. We've got our own design philosophy. We've got our own design um, inclinations. And, which, is uh, also, which is also uh, difficult to copy. Yeah, well, it's difficult to copy. Right? Lots of people are trying to copy it. Yeah, <laughs> but I've never uh, seen it. it's 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 um, we'll see it. We'll see we'll see that happening. I mean, our products, for example, get copied all the time. But mm -hmm. I think actually it's it's not a bad thing because what I want to see is more options for gamers. I want to see because Razer, we just do the top of the line, no compromise kind of products. It's the ultimate, right? And many friends of ours have said. Um, of fans have said, man, why don't you just take off some of these ultimate features and then we can get it cheaper and make it for everyone. The thing is, if we did that, it wouldn't be a Razer product. Because a Razer product is the very best in any category. It's the ultimate, it's the no compromise, and there it is. 
So I don't want to design to price. Now for that, now many people will copy and they will make much cheaper product. That I think gives gamers a choice. You know, if somebody's on a budget, they can go buy something else. But for us, Razer, it's about that ultimate, ultimate experience, mm -hmm. and that's what we are. And and we're very open about the fact that mm -hmm. um, unlike different uh, other companies, we are not driven by revenue. Do are we profitable? Yes. There's there's a lot of profit yeah, right now. <laughs> yes, but. In the profit, what happens is that we take, there are two things that we do to the profit. One is we reinvest it into R&D. Yeah. That's why we're so far ahead when it comes down in terms of new technologies and stuff like that. From the profit that we make, we give it, you know, put it back into R&D. The other thing that we do with our profits is that we give it back to the community. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we um, sponsor tournaments, we sponsor eSport athletes, we work with uh, unboxers and, and things <laughs> like that. You know, all this to me is important. And that's why we do focus on the fact that we must be profitable. Why? Because we want to give back to the community mm -hmm. and we want to continue funding um, new technologies. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen some things uh, with the R&D, like the Green Razor switches, mm -hmm. which was a big, a big step Absolutely. for the Black Widow, right. the newest edition. Um, will we see some things like that in the future? We saw it with the Mamba right now. Um, well, you, you have seen that with the Mamba. We've got this all new structure for the for the mouse switches at this point of time. Is this the roadmap that you will go? Every new Razer product will have um, its own uh, components. Razer R&D components um, made by your own R&D? That, that's a good point. I, you see, constantly, we want to be able to control every single aspect and give the perfect experience. Um, and that's what we do, you know, whether it's on component level, whether it's on a software level, because all the software that we make, mm -hmm. it's not like unlike other, it's not like other companies, they outsource it, they go to somewhere else, or even the hardware, they just go to a Chinese factory to make it. For us, we want to control every single aspect so that we can give the best possible experience as far as we can. Mm -hmm. um, do you think, um, it's about, let me prepare you, um, sure. with, the, with the VR uh, aspect, um, you have seen, you've made some, uh, um, some um, uh, and you have entered with the always uh, with the always VR open source VR open yeah. source VR. Uh, will you plan on uh, expanding on uh, the virtual reality? Will you make even your own headset? Will you compete with Oculus? Uh, so we don't Do compete with Oculus. I, I I love the work that Oculus does. I I have a huge amount of respect for the work that um, Valve is doing with the headsets, etc. And in fact, OS VR works with both the Oculus uh, platform and with the, the Valve platform. For me, I look at it more like a gamer. I'm excited about what VR can bring. I'm also concerned because I'm also mindful of all the technology mm -hmm. which is behind VR. Razer is one of the leaders in VR. We've spent so much time in VR. And we know that it's so close to a consumer product, but my biggest fear is bad VR, that it will spoil the experience, right? So. Right now, I think our focus is to make sure that the experience is great mm -hmm. and that open source VR, more importantly, puts the power of VR, this incredible platform, mm -hmm. into the hands of gamers everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's our focus right now. Maybe someday we'll look at consumer VR devices, but right now we've got no such plans. Mm -hmm. Our focus is to enable as many VR practitioners out there and make some cool stuff. Great. Um, uh, with OS VR, um, with VR in general, uh, there are some uh, motion sickness problems. It's one of the biggest issues yes. in VR. Yes. Um, what will uh, always VR uh, will do in that area? We'll bring together the smartest people in VR to solve that problem. You're absolutely right. That's the biggest problem. Now, I have it too. I yeah. can stand in an Oculus. I can wear it for like 10 or 10, 15 minutes. Sure. And then after a few motion sickness yeah, and stuff like that. So there are two ways to do it. One is that everybody is protected over the IP and then they keep quiet about it and try to work at it. But it'll take a really long time. So I'm a gamer, I'm a bit more impatient. What we've done is that we've think, we, we think that the community is always more powerful than anything else. And we give it back to the community so that the software is, in, is entirely open source. The hardware, anyone can go 3D print and make their own hardware. What we're betting on is that by getting more and more smart people involved in contributing back from the community, we're able to solve these problems with VR sooner mm -hmm. rather than later. Right. Someone will get it right, eventually. Yeah. Eventually. Someone with uh, a lot of sickness problems, <laughs> motion sickness. Yeah. Um, uh, something more of a personal question. Sure. Um, 
obviously you love all of your products you you do mm. all of your products you, you put your your own finishing touch on them um, but I, I want you to tell me what is the the one product that you're really proud of in the history of razor uh, I'll give you two <laughs> two Great. well the, so the first one would be like the, the the gaming mouse because for us we didn't as I've mentioned just make a gaming mouse we invented or we created this entire industry. Think about it. This entire industry would not exist if not for the first gaming mouse that we did. You know, everyone is copied, everyone is followed. But that's fine. But this entire industry, we created it. And that's something I think we are really proud of. Mm -hmm. The other would be um, the Blade laptop. You know, back, it was the same thing. You know, we wanted to, I wanted to make a, a, a phenomenal gaming laptop. All la gaming laptops in the past, gaming laptops mm -hmm. in the past were thick, heavy, they weren't even gaming laptops, and everyone I, I asked, you know, can you build this? You know, can you design this? They said, no, it's impossible. Nobody wants it, and it's impossible. Technically, it's, it's, it's crazy. So back then, we brought together some of the smartest, the best um, thermals engineers. We brought together some of the best um, EE engineers, etc. We put them to task, and we then created what I like to think of as the world's first true gaming laptop. And think about it, it's been three years since we had launched the first Blade. Mm -hmm. And today, everyone thinks, oh yeah, that's how a gaming laptop should be. Mm -hmm. But if we didn't launch it back then, all gaming laptops today are still gonna be thinking. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I'm really proud about the Blade, because again, it wasn't just creating a product, it's being it's created this entire you industry. Up, yeah, you opened up a new a whole new universe. Absolutely. That. And yeah. and I think that's what um, we constantly do again and again and again. Um, we believe in, firstly, not giving a shit if people tell us it's impossible, and number two, designing things that we want ourselves and designing things that we don't, we don't spend time doing like interviews or, or questionnaires, like, oh, what do you want as a gamer? We're gamers ourselves. We talk to gamers all the time. We know what we want and, um, you know, we go out and invent it. So by that, uh, by saying you're, you're, you're a gamer as yourself, um, do you play games? Do you oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, do you play games and what kind of and in which platform? Sure. Well, um, actually, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I, I play, of course, on the PC. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why you know, we invented the Play Laptop was so that I could play PC games everywhere and anywhere and on a plane or wherever, right? I wasn't going to, like, recently, today, you know, we were in Hamburg, yesterday we were in Berlin, the day before we were in uh, Paris, and the day before that we were in London. If we hadn't invented the blade, my back would have been broken by the time I, I, I got <laughs> over here. So, so I play on the PC. I'm hugely passionate about, about on the PC. But then again, I play on all platforms, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've played on the PlayStation, The uh, Last of Us, I've played on the PlayStation, I've played on the Xbox. Um, uh, I play on the mobile phone also at the same time. Mm -hmm. To me, I think it's a great time to be a gamer because you can pretty much play games everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everywhere. Uh, there's diversity also. Mm -hmm. um, many platforms, many devices. Absolutely. Um, uh, what is, um, sorry, um, what, uh, do you have any favorite game? Uh, favorite game? Yeah. That one, the one which is closest to your heart. A lot of them are close to my heart. I mean, I, <laughs> I've been playing since I was a kid. Um, and I play all kinds of games. I, I, I like um, RPGs, I play FPSs competitively. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, there are some that stick with me, like Ultima, you know, one of the earliest Ultima. games, like Ultima 4. Um, Richard Garrett, Lord British, is uh, doing the spiritual successor, mm -hmm. A Shroud of the Avatar. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Brian Farr goes out a lot of work with uh, mm -hmm. Wasteland, and, uh, you know, he's got Bard's Tale 4, which I'm also backing at this point of time, on Kickstarter. Um, and lots of other games. You know, I, I, you know, enjoyed this year Dragon Age. Uh, I played uh, Inquisition. I played um, uh, Dying Light. Uh, in fact, right after this, because this is the last um, stop of the press mm -hmm. tour, I am finally going to be able to start on Witcher 3. The Witcher 3. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the Witcher. So, um, uh, The Witcher. Mm. You like The Witcher. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like all games. I mean, <laughs> like I play a lot of Civilization mm -hmm. now also, because it's a great game for me to just start and then I can come back to it any time. Have you got friends on, project, uh, on CD Projekt? Uh, I've actually started playing a little bit on, on, on it, um, but I am now, I think, really, I, I tend to spend a lot more time at this uh, juncture on uh, RPGs or FPSs I can jump in with a friend, and um, Civ is maybe more like a really long, 
flight and stuff like that that I do. Mm -hmm. Haven't haven't really spent that much time with it yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love your gaming controllers. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah. from my own experience, uh, I'm an owner of uh, the Onsa. Okay. Um, and from my own experience, uh, I would like uh, I appreciate the quality and feel apart and, uh, and uh, the quality and feel. Uh, apart from the fact that I'd like to see you releasing more products, do you intend on releasing a controller for uh, the number one console on the market right now, PS4? Um, well, I think we are always exploring different things. But the thing about Razer is we are probably the only company in this space mm -hmm. that does all the design in-house from end to end. You know, we don't outsource our IT, we don't outsource our software and things like that. So we've got very few resources and we tend to focus on very few products. So the thing is, depending on your perspective, Razer may have many products or very few products, mm -hmm. right? Why did I say that? Some people say, oh, Razer's always releasing products that I want all the time. You know, you guys are doing this all the time. But if I say, if you look at us compared to uh, many other companies, we actually release fewer products than many companies release in, you know, one quarter and stuff like that. So likewise, to answer your question, um, we're always looking at different platforms and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But for us, it's a matter of um, uh, resources. It takes a very long time for us to make mm -hmm. a product. But hey, never say never. Yeah. Uh, will you have anything for Xbox One also? For the Xbox One? Yeah. So we're working because on the Xbox have, One? Yeah. You have a tradition mm -hmm. uh, with the Xbox 360. Yes. You have released uh, two, the Ons and the Sabretooth. Yes. Yeah. Um, we you have another one for the Xbox One? So we have announced um, that we will have uh, a new controller coming up for the Xbox One pretty mm -hmm. soon. So that's something that is already on the roadmap and uh, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see it soon. Great. What is, um, what is your relationship with uh, the competition? And what do you think that differentiates uh, with Razer? Uh, I don't think we really have a, a relationship per se because mm -hmm. for us, we, we define the benchmarks in the industry. We are more focused on competing internally with ourselves. So we rarely look outside. I mean, you see a lot of competitors always very obsessed with Razer, like, oh, you know, we're doing this and that. But for us, I think we're obsessed with ourselves. We're obsessed with competing internally and making great product. The way I see it is um, we're one of the few companies out there that has real technology, right? So many people can just see that we innovate. You know, we. We, we don't go to a Chinese manufacturer to make a mouse. You know, to be able to design something like the Blade is real hardcore engineering. And we're probably the only company that has all these hardcore technology and engineering in house. Secondly, I think for ourselves, we are really focused on the gamer, for gamers, by gamers. And there are some companies that may say, oh, I'm doing gaming products. But when you ask the CEO, the guy has never played a game in his life. He doesn't care. To him, it's a business. For us, it's not business. You know, this is something that we are um, truly, truly passionate about. And I think the third thing for us is really on a design level. We, we don't just look at design from an from like a artistic level or aesthetics, etc. But it's all, all about looking at things from uh, an all-encompassing level. Let me give you an example. So there was a company recently that copied the Naga. They put the keypad on the side of the, the mouse. Mm -hmm. And I was watching a video by one of the marketing guys, and he said, oh, you know, we, we uh, interviewed many, many uh, MMO uh, designers. I think they launched it in 2000, last year or the year before, I can't remember. He said, we interviewed many MMO people, and then we came up with this design, which is exactly like the manga. So I laughed, because when it comes from the design perspective, I came up with the idea. And the idea to design a keypad on the side of the mouse could not be designed today. It could only have been designed when the, Mambo, uh, when the Naga was first made, which was back in 2008 or 2009. Back then, everybody had a Nokia phone. It wasn't like a smartphone. And from driving, I realized that, oh, my, my thumb can already text. Then I don't even need to see where the numbers are. I already knew where the places were. That's where the idea to put a keypad on the side of the, the, the mouse came about for the Naga. So today, because smartphones, everyone uses smartphones. Nobody messages like that anymore. I knew that that whatever marketing thing they said that they went to interview MMO guys was, was false, it was a lie. Because that's how Razer designs. It's an intersection between um, art, technology, and anthropology. It's about culture, it's about understanding the user. We don't do focus groups, we don't do any of that. Because we ourselves are gamers, mm -hmm. for gamers by gamers.
Great, that's your motto. That's our motto. Um, so, uh, a last message for our uh, good viewers. Do you want to say something to them? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's good to be here. You know, it's good to be talking to you guys. Um, I hope, and in fact, I think I will be visiting uh, Greece pretty soon. At least I hope I will. And looking forward to meeting as many of the uh, Razor fans out there. Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.